What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Well, kind of a build video. So this is going to be a new exotic review and build breakdown. Because uh, not only am I going to tell you all about this exotic just because I, I just recently got it to drop. Um, it might be a little embarrassing to some, but uh, for me personally, I still don't even have the uh, Regulus. But I did just so happen to get the Ravenous the other night. Shout out to the Donut Crew DNC clan on Xbox. They helped me with the uh, Iron Horse raid with that all skill build strategy. A lot of fun. I already made a video on that. But what I didn't tell you is at the end of that raid, um, one of the players from the clan got this to drop. And of course they didn't need it. They run that raid every day. But for me, you know, thank you. Woohoo! Anyways, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the Ravenous. I'm going to tell you why, in my opinion, it is the best exotic rifle in slot. And then after the build breakdown, or after the exotic breakdown and testing, I'll do a build breakdown. And then at the end of that, I'm actually going to show you this weapon in action. Uh, because what I did just recently, I think it was about a day or two ago, I did a uh, looking for group LFG on Xbox, and I found a group of uh, random agents trying to do the Dark Hours raid. Um, they were on Razorback, they were stuck on Razorback, someone dropped out, and I just so happened to have this build together, and it did wonders for Razorback. Um, ever since I can remember, I have always used the Eagle Bearer, for Razorback doing the generators. However, um, here recently, a lot of people have been telling me that the Ravenous is actually better for doing the weak points and everything for Razorback uh, compared to the Eagle Bear. So of course I had to try it out and lo and behold, it was pretty sweet. Um, we actually completed it the first time going through it and it was a lot of fun. So after the exotic breakdown, the build breakdown, I'll show you guys some raid footage and then get you out of here. So it might be a little lengthy, but we're going to have fun. So shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom and let's get into it. So first up, we're going to talk about this weapon right here, the Ravenous. So the only way to get this weapon is to go through the Iron Horse Raid. Um, as far as I know, you can get it off of uh, boss drops or the chest at the end. But of course, you do have to run the Iron Horse Raid. Um, this is not on discovery mode. You have to do it on normal mode. Um, but like I said, if you run it with a LFG group, nine times out of ten, those agents already have it. So they're more likely to drop it. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. But anyways, let's look at this weapon right here. So as far as the mods go, uh, they are locked in place just like all exotics. However, for the optic, it gives you crit chance. For the under barrel, you get stability. For the muzzle, crit damage. And then for the magazine, reload speed. Now the reason, well one of the many reasons I think this is the best exotic rifle in slot is because it also comes with the attribute damage to targets out of cover. This is huge. So, starting at the top, uh, the base damage on uh, the build that I'm going to show you guys here in a second is at 298.7k. Now that's with the RPM of 240 and a 60 round magazine. That's right, 60 rounds. And you're shooting it at 240 per minute. So just to start comparing it to other exotics, uh, exotic rifles that is. So here's the Diamondback. The Diamondback hits really hard, like a Mack truck. However, the attribute that it comes with is headshot damage. You don't want that. You want the damage to targets out of cover because it's multiplicative and it's uh, to every part of that enemy. It doesn't matter if it's the head, the body, the foot, the arm, you know, the eye whatever it's still going to be damage to targets out of cover however with headshots obviously you got to go for the head 
But another thing that's cool, and when we go to the firing range and test it out, is that this rifle, the Ravenous, look at this compared to the Diamondback. Now the Diamondback at the firing range, I will show you, it hits really, really hard. However, the funny part is that the Ravenous will almost have as much damage with an RPM that is 2.4 faster. That's a lot. In a magazine size, that's over, you know, 10 times, what, 12 times. Um, it's ridiculous. So compared to the Diamondback, the Ravenous has this uh, no questions asked. So looking at the other exotic rifle, we have the Ruthless. The Ruthless or the Merciless, depending on if you pre-ordered the game or didn't pre-order the game. Um, the Ruthless um, comes with a much lower base damage. Uh, we all know that it got, you know, nerfed in the past and the talent got reworked in the past and all that. So after all that's said and done, it has a magazine size that's half that of the Ravenous. Uh, the RPMs is much higher, however, the stability is out the window with the uh, uh, Ruthless Merciless. And then the attribute comes with crit chance. So then the Ravenous wins again because it comes with damage targets out of cover. So when we start looking, you can see with accuracy and stability, it has way less stability running the Merciless Ruthless. Um, it might have accuracy, but that's because it shoots, you know, whatever. So compared to these two, and I'll show you in the firing range, I just think they fall short compared to the Ravenous. And uh, because of that, and you'll see the numbers here in a second, uh, it's just a no-brainer. It's the best in slot when it comes to exotic rifles. Now, we haven't even gotten to the good part yet. So the talents. So uh, let me do, do, do. I'll try to get it to fill up the page. There we go. That way you can read it while I'm reading it. Um, so it says the talent is called, what is this? Geary and Freaky? Gear, yeah, Geary and Freaky. Frecky? Freaky? Yeah. So on trigger pull, it fires both barrels at once. Yes. This is the double barreled rifle. It is so sick, you guys. It, it like, you'll see. So when you fire on the right shoulder, it adds a offensive primer. And then when you fire from the left shoulder, it fires a defensive primer. So it, it's really fun and it's, it's a whole different way of playing and you'll see in the gameplay, um, you have to really adapt your gameplay because you have to switch shoulder to shoulder. Now, you, you might think, man, that, that just sounds horrible. I would never want to do that. And, you know, you, you might be right. However, with a 60 round magazine, you don't have to just shoot five bullets, switch shoulder, five bullets, switch shoulder. If you're in an engagement, you can shoot, you know, 10 bullets, switch shoulder, 20 bullets, switch shoulder. It doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, don't think that you can, you know, you'd need to just, you know, one, two, three, four, five, switch, one, two, three, four, five, switch. You could, and that would be the most efficient way of playing it. However, it, it's really not likely for the average agent. So what I, what I would say is just practice switching shoulders while firing and just get the hang of it. Because even for me, it's a little weird because it, it pulls off your, uh, your reticle and it just changes a lot of stuff really quick. So you just have to be really, really agile when it comes to that. Um, I myself, like I said, I've just got this weapon. So I'm still, you know, trying to hone in on the skills, but I'm going to have a few builds with this. This is a lot of fun to use. And you'll see with the raid, it actually does really, really well for Razorback. Um, I was hitting um, 2.4 million on one shoulder and on the other shoulder, I think I hit the computer for like 6.5 million at the firing range. I can get it up to between 8.5 and 9 million. Like this rifle does a lot of damage and with the RPMs, it's ridiculous. All right, so let's go back to this talent. Hits from one shoulder will detonate all of the opposite shoulders primers. So like I said, you could shoot it, you know, it has to be at least five. That, that'll get you, you know, the max. And then switch shoulders. 
However, if you, you know, you're in a firing fight and you have to shoot from that shoulder, go for it. Just remember that once you switch shoulders, you'll have that opportunity to detonate all those primers. So here we go. When detonated, each offensive primer, so offensive is when you start off on the right shoulder, that will deal 100% weapon damage. While the defensive primer on the left shoulder, that'll give you 4% bonus armor and 10% damage amplified damage to armor plates for five seconds. So that's, that's where this gets ridiculous. And then the primer effectiveness is doubled at 10 stacks. Remember, you have a double barrel rifle. So 10 stacks is five shots. So that's why I keep saying the most efficient way of playing this, you shoot your five rounds, switch shoulders, shoot your five rounds, switch shoulders. But uh, I know that that's gonna be a little rough for some people to do. So what I would say is just keep shooting on that same shoulder until you can you know, comfortably switch. And then knowing so, you're gonna detonate that stack as soon as you do that, so just be ready. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so yeah, that is the Ravenous. Let's uh, let's go shoot it at the firing range, and then I'll give you guys a build breakdown and then some gameplay. Do do do. All right, so on my way to the firing range, let me know in the comments section below if you have a Ravenous or Regulus, um, if you've even tried to get it, and if you have not gotten it yet. Tell me why, whether it be matchmaking for the raid, you can't find anybody, you know, maybe you don't know that I have a Discord channel that does a lot of raid LFGs. I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to get into a raid without, you know, those toxic, you know, raid elitists. You have to have 200 crit damage to join my party. Okay, kid. All right, so here we are. 15 meters for the rifle at invulnerable elite. I'm not doing anything special at all. I just want to show you guys. So what was it? Left shoulder. Okay. So I'm hitting around, what was that? 807, there's 838. And then switch. All right, so now I'm, oh, I got all that bonus armor. Okay. And then switch. Oh, look at that, 8.2 million. Okay, so the first one, I was shooting on the left shoulder, and this was gonna give me all that bonus armor. So when I switch, see, I got all that bonus armor. And then I shoot this one, switch, and guaba boom, 8.7 million. That's crazy. So, that's basically the ravenous in a nutshell. Now I said I wanted to compare it to the other one. So here's the Diamondback. Now remember the Diamondback has headshot damage and it does not have damage to targets out of cover. So I'm hitting, what was that, six million? Ooh. Six million to the head. See, only 1.5 million to the chest. I only have a five, oh, there we go, 4.3. Jesus. 4.3 oh, okay so you can see that right away the diamondback doesn't really compare to the ravenous like the damage is nice yes but you have to be consistent with your headshots and you only have a five round magazine five rounds compared to 62 because you get two in the chamber for the ravenous um, it, it's just uncomparable so yeah, you do hit some cool numbers, but I'm hitting eight point, you know, whatever million to the chest. While on here with the Diamondback, what was it to the chest? 4.3. So like half and with like a tenth of the, a less than a tenth of the magazine, it just doesn't make any sense. So right there, the Ravenous wins. And then the other one I wanted to compare it to right here, the Ruthless uh, or the Merciless depending on if you pre-ordered the game or not. So here is the Ruthless. Remember, it shoots faster, but it hits, you know, 
uh, it hits a lot softer and the magazine is only at 31 rounds. All right, so here's Ruthless. And you see it does the two. So I'm hitting about a million. Um, yeah, there you go. And then 390. Okay, so the, to the head. 1.4, and then remember, I should get, there it is, an explosion. But you can see how this one's just not practical. The, the way it shoots, uh, the less rounds, you would have to hit all your shots to get the explosion. Um, there, there's just, it, it was nerfed a long time ago. Like this was a lot of fun to run whenever it had that holstered talent. And then you could, you know, use and abuse the uh, explosive damage. But it just doesn't seem practical anymore. I mean, even with that explosion, I just hit like 2 million, it looked like. Um, it, it's just nothing compared to the Ravenous. So the Ravenous wins overall, and that's why I think it is best exotic rifle in slot. Alright, so one last time. Do the ba ba boom. Nine. Look at that. Like, come on. It's not even comparable. All right, let's go to the build breakdown. So this build right here that I'm about to show you, I used for the Dark Hours raid. Um, I did this with a random group of agents, um, none of which knew me and none of which knew each other. They were just all random LFG guys um, that we, you know, fell into. So having that in mind, um, you can use this build. Just make sure you play it the way it needs to be ran. If you feel you are too squishy, you should probably up the armor. However, if you are running the Dark Hours raid and you want to be as efficient and as effective as possible, you need to run it this way. I promise you. Um, I understand that it's not to everyone's playstyle, but you know, Dark Hours Raid is a DPS check, through and through. Um, it's not a blue check, it's not an armor check, it is a full-on DPS check. So once you get the mechanics down, you just need to bring the DPS and you are good to go. So just remember that. So without further ado, what is up? This is going to be the build breakdown. Shh. So alright, here we go. This is my Ravenous build. All right, so starting off at the top, I am running the Survivalist Specialization. Reason being is I was running this in the Dark Hours Raid. And more importantly, I was running as a generator guy for Razorback. So remember for Razorback, the last boss of the Dark Hours Raid, you have eight players, four people on generators, and four people on ad control. And two of those four players that are on generators need to have a survivalist specialization. Reason being is you can shoot that window open immediately with one cross bolt and then the other player can either throw a grenade or shoot a grenade launcher into that exact same window and it opens up razor bag, do damage, you, you get what I mean. Um, if you don't, just sit here and I'll show you gameplay at the end of me doing just exactly that. So that is why I'm using the survivalist specialization. So just, there you go. Now for the weapon, obviously I'm using the ravenous um, because it, this, that's what this video is all about. So the ravenous, I am at 298.7K total damage. That's with a 240 round magazine, or 240 RPMs and a 60 to 62 round magazine, depending if you have bullets in the chamber. Now, as far as the attributes, I have max rifle damage at 15% and max damage to targets out of cover of 10%. For the crit damage, I am at 15%, so you can get this to hit a little bit harder. Now, as far as the talent, I've already gone through that with the exotic breakdown. Just remember, most efficient way, shoot your five rounds, switch shoulders, you know, rinse and repeat, vice versa. Now, for the gameplay and for this build, I'm using the Carbine 7 for my secondary. Reason being is I love this weapon. The only thing I do not love about it is it comes with that really messed up talent. So what I did is I rolled mine to Optimist. 
Now, as far as the damage goes, I'm at 114.9k total damage with 828 RPMs and a 50 round magazine. For the attributes, I'm at max AR damage, 20% health damage, and 4.8% rate of fire. And then for that talent, like I said, I re-rolled it to Optimist. So every 10% ammo missing from my magazine, I get 3% weapon damage. It's a lot of fun. Now, because I was using this for the raid, I was going with just, you know, stability, weapon handling, and accuracy mods overall. Just because you can see right here, with the accuracy and stability nearly maxed out, it makes it very easy. I am only using this weapon to help my ad control guy kill ads. I'm not using this for damage phases or anything like that, purely just to help out my guy kill some ads. And then, you know, obviously for the damage, ravenous, baby. All right, so for the sidearm, I'm using the double barrel sawed off. Reason being is sometimes your ad control guy or just ads in general will just spawn in crazy places and somehow end up behind you. If that's the case, whip out the shotgun, boom, boom, they're dead. It's really simple. Not only that, but it comes with the talent close and personal. So when you kill a target within seven meters, it'll grant you 30% weapon damage. Just do the math. Now this one, base damage, 1.5 million. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Now looking at the build overall, a lot of people might be like, oh, here we go again, another damage build. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, this is for the raid and it's really easy to put together. Um, nothing too crazy here. Uh, I'm using this for both AR and rifle damage. And it's a lot of fun. So starting off with the mask, I am using the Coyote's mask. This one is God rolled with max weapon damage, crit chance, and crit damage. For the mod, I put more crit chance on here just because the rifle doesn't come with a lot of crit chance. So I wanted to bump that up a little bit. That way I can utilize the Coyote's mask and go to town. Now the cool thing about this mask and using the rifle is that a lot of the targets you're going to hit are either going to be 15 meters to like say 30 meters away. Um, and especially when it comes to Razorback, uh, obviously it's going to be more than the uh, 15 to 25 meter range. So the talent is called Pack Instincts. You and your allies will gain a bonus based off of the distance you hit an enemy. So if I hit an enemy between 0 and 15 meters, everybody, including myself, gets crit damage 25%. Uh, if I hit an enemy or a target 15 to 25 meters, everyone, including myself, gets 10% crit chance and 10% crit damage. And then in my, um, you know, example, I'm going to be hitting people from further distances. So I'm going to give myself and the team 25% crit chance. Now, running multiple coyotes mask is the best way to go because they do stack. So say my ad control guy is running Coyote's Mask as well. Maybe he's giving everyone the crit damage of 25%. And then I am shooting long distance, so I'm giving everyone crit chance. You know, it just really helps out everybody damage-wise. Now going to the backpack, Walker, Harris, and Co. Now the Walker, Harris, and Co. brand set bonus I get from this build, 5% weapon damage. Now this one is God rolled as well. I have max weapon damage, max headshot damage, and max crit damage. For the mod I went for more crit damage because I am running the coyote's mask and in the raid you will have more than one you know, person running the mask. So you can really just spec really hard into crit damage because you know you're going to get that crit chance from the mask. Now this one comes with the talent Vigilance. Now for Vigilance, I get weapon damage of 25% as long as nothing hits me. I don't take any damage. But every time I do take damage, it'll take that bonus away for four seconds and then it'll give it right back. So it's not a big deal. Um, especially when running Razorback, I highly recommend this talent because you will have a drone guy knocking out the drones and you'll have a ad control guy taking care of the ads. So in theory, 
you should be able to utilize this talent to its fullest you know potential 100 percent of the time unless like i said you know you get those random ads that you know somehow teleport behind you all right going to the chest piece this is probably going to be the most controversial piece of this build eh, maybe we'll see uh this is the sacrifice yes the named providence defense chess piece now you can get this weapon or this chess piece from anywhere in the game basically whether it be pvp pve doesn't matter you can even get it from named item caches now what's cool about this chess piece is it comes with perfect glass cannon it's kind of a double-edged sword so you get amplified damage to everything you're doing by 30 percent which is amazing because we do some really crazy damage. However, all the damage that you take is amplified by 60%. Yeah, that sucks. However, like I just said with the Vigilance talent uh, for the backpack, same logic applies here. I am not planning on getting hit. And if I do, you know, it, there's a problem. Whether, whether it be the drone guy, the ad control guy, whatever, you know, you're, you shouldn't be getting hit. You should just be able to do your damage. Same with uh, Buddy and Lucy. Um, as long as you're in the right spot, you shouldn't be taking any damage. You can just utilize it. Boom, boom, boom. And then for Weasel, Dizzy, Ricochet, you could take out the snipers instantly. As long as someone else has the aggro to the boss, you're not really going to get hit. So, I mean, this pretty much applies for everything. Um, same with Boomer. If you are doing ads for Boomer, you understand that you have your ads that come out of a certain door, whatever, and boom, you're done. I mean, so it just uh, depends on how well you know your mechanics, whether or not you should run, say, you know, Unbreakable, or you could run Tardigrade, or you could run Perfect Glass Cannon, just saying. So for this one, it is the na uh, named Providence Defense. So I do get the 15% headshot damage from the brand set bonus. Now, as far as the attributes, I have weapon damage at 14.5, max crit damage at 12, and health at 18.5k. Obviously, I do not want health there, but RN Jesus. And then for the mod, I just went with a max crit damage mod. Now going to the gloves, contractor gloves. Um, pretty much everyone knows this by now they are best in slot if you're doing a damage build and you are not running these gloves um, you better have a good reason because these gloves are pretty much best in slot for any sort of damage build now it is named Petrov and we are not utilizing the LMG so don't even worry about the brand set bonus what we are doing is we are utilizing the damage to armor Damage to armor is multiplicative, and a lot of these enemies are elites. Um, every once in a while, you will get the red enemies for Razorback, but besides that, they are all elites and they all have armor. So running damage to armor is a no-brainer. Now, this one is God rolled, so all my attributes are maxed out. I have the max weapon damage, max crit damage, and then of course the 8% damage to armor. Now the cool thing is, is I'm running a rifle. So running these knee pads is actually, you know, makes sense. Um, these are the Fox's Prayer knee pads. Same as the gloves, these knee pads are pretty much best in slot. So if you're running a damage build and you are not running these knee pads, you better have a good reason why. Now for everyone, Fox's Prayer knee pads are the named Overlord Armament. Now Overlord Armament gives us 10% rifle damage. That's why I'm just under that 300k for the Ravenous. Now this one as well, God rolled, max weapon damage, crit damage, and then of course the 8% damage to targets out of cover. So remember, with this build and this rifle, I have 18% damage to targets out of cover, and I have the damage to armor as well. Now, finally, I'm running this holster. Now, depending on what you want to do, I'm running this holster because running this through the entire raid, I am using both the rifle and the assault rifle. I want to get damage done. Um, so 
you guys could very well, let's see, what's another? You could run a improvised. That would be a great one. You could run Seska if you want more crit, or you could run Walker Harrison Co. for more damage to armor. So for everyone that just wants the Ravenous hitting as hard as it possibly could, you'd run it this way. So for this example, it'd be another Walker Harrison Co. Max weapon damage, crit damage, crit chance. And then what that would do is give you more damage to armor, 5%. And then that'd bump you up to 13% armor damage with 18% damage to targets out of cover. Just remember that your assault rifle is going to hit dramatically less. Now, for the crit and for the weapon stats, this is actually for the Ravenous. So 298.8k weapon damage. That's 79.6k if you want to take it into PvP. I have not done that yet, but I will. Uh, if just let me know in the comment section below. You just say, um, a Ravenous PvP. Something like that. Alright, for the crit chance and crit damage, I'm at 33% crit chance. Remember with the Coyote's Mask, I can get the percent crit chance on top of that. It would bump me up to 58. Now the max is 60, so this is very comfortable. I really wouldn't go anywhere over 35 crit chance, just because once you have that mask active, you get max, so there's no reason to go above that. Spend crit damage, headshot damage, and you're good to go. Uh, being said, I do have 160, which this is without the Coyote's Mask proc'd either, so I have another 35 uh, if there's multiple people running the Coyote's Mask. So this has a potential to go up to 196% crit damage. So with all that said and done, perfect. I love this build for Razorback, it's amazing. Now going to the Offensive tab, 104.5 All Weapon Damage Bonus. Um, and then rifle damage is at 40%. So every time I'm running the Ravenous, I'm at 144.5% damage bonus total. It's pretty good. Now with the Walker Harrison Co. holster, I'm only at 15% assault rifle damage. With the uh, Fenris holster, that bumps this up to 25%. So I'm losing quite a bit there. Now going to gear talents, like I said, Vigilance and Perfect Glass Cannon. Um, running these two is a no-brainer because the same logic applies to both. You, you're not planning on getting hit by enemies a lot, so you want to run both of these to get the most damage you could possibly deal. Now, pack that with Pack Instincts, and not only are you helping yourself get more damage, but you're helping your entire team get more damage. Now for the defensive tab, you are a little bit squishy, so you're at a 726k armor with 351k health. Now the explosive resistance and hazard, those are both due to the watch levels, just remember that. Um, my little disclaimer for the watch level is pretty simple. If you are under 1000 for the shade level or watch level, then some of these attributes are going to be lower because you do not have all of these boxes maxed out. However, if you are above uh, shade level 1000, you do not have to worry about that at all. You're already maxed out, you're good to go. So uh, yeah, that's the last disclaimer there. So that is the Ravenous build uh, that I used for the raid. I hope you guys have enjoyed the exotic breakdown, not only for the Ravenous, but for this build as a whole. And what I'm going to do is leave you with some gameplay of me finishing Razorback using this build with a random group of guys I found on LFG. Um, yeah, with all that said and done, don't forget, hit that like, subscribe to the channel. I'm Kamikaze Von Doom, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.
systems exposed. Missile turrets activating. Taking out a bunch of Black Tusk's experimental weaponry. We'll get a team to sweep the area and recover whatever they can. There's bound to be intel and equipment we can put to good use. System restored. <laughs> 